Welcome to Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit 2020 Business Meeting. We're so glad that you could join us in this year as we provide you with the 2019 year-end financial results of your cooperative and the reporting of the nominating committee. I'm Brian Boyd, current vice chairman of your Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit Board of Directors. They say that change is the only constant. I find that to be more true with each passing year. But with change comes opportunity. Opportunity in, to innovate, to create, and to improve. One change is in, in the new format of this meeting. And the fact that many of you are watching the recording from the comfort of your home at your leisure. Kathy Blair is appointed as the recording secretary for our meeting. Will the secretary please read the minutes of the 2019 annual stockholders meeting, or do we have a motion to dispense with the reading? I have a motion. Is there a second? second. I have a second. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes, please say aye. Those opposed? Aye. The motion carries. Now, please help me welcome Brian Rosati, Chief Financial Officer, for our overview of the association's financial position and our patronage program. Thank you, Brian. It is my pleasure to briefly talk to you about Mid Atlantic Farm Credit's 2019 financial results and our patronage program, the piece of our business model that makes your borrowing from Farm Credit unique and a real value to you, our borrowers, and members. For Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit, 2019 was another solid year of net, net income, increased capital levels, as well as growth of loan volume and new memberships. In 2019, we increased our active voting members with loans outstanding from 10,500 members to 10,714 members. That's an increase of 2%. Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit capital levels, which represent the financial strength and capabilities to continue to serve our members during uncertainty in the economy, increased 27 million to 662 million. And our capital ratios are all well above the regulatory requirements. These strong capital levels is what allows us to continue to operate and pay out patronage to our customers on an annual basis. The loan volume increased 41 million to 2.85 billion, which is up one and a half percent from the end of 2018. The average loan balance per member remained consistent at 266,000 in 2019 compared to 267,000 as of 2018. The growth continues to be properly diversified as the percentage of loans outstanding remains consistent amongst the commodity groups. Like you and your operations, diversification is important to our portfolio so we can manage our risk as well. Five commodity groups make up approximately 70% of our portfolio the two largest commodities, cash, grains, and crops, as well as poultry, make up 44% of our total portfolio, which is down from 45% last year. These are just some of the examples how Mid-Atlantic continues to manage risk and diversification within our portfolio. Another key highlight is our credit quality of our portfolio. Acceptable loans finished the year at 96.1% compared to 96.9% a year ago. That's a decrease of less than 1%. But despite this slight decline, Mid-Atlantic credit quality continues to be around all-time highs, reflecting excellence in both your operations and the association's credit management. So how does all this impact income for 2019? Our, 20, our net income for 2019 was 63.8 million, which is again amongst the highest levels in Mid-Atlantic history. For the last five years, net income has totaled 319 million, which is also amongst the highest of any five-year period in the association's history. Over the past five years, the association's funding bank, Ag First Farm Credit, has issued special patronage distributions to the association of approximately 75 million, which has been a significant contributor to our increases in net income. With the receipt of this special patronage in 2019, your association was able to make its own special patronage distribution in February of this year of 10 million, which was 68% of the remaining outstanding 2013 non-qualified allocated surplus. This amount was distributed to cash in our, to our shareholders. The cash distribution was in addition to 10.1 million of the cash distributed in December of 2019, which represented the remainder of the 2012 and 35% of 2013 non-qualified allocated surplus. The cash distribution 
based on the 2019 earnings is 17 million, which will be distributed in early, early April. So since last year's annual meeting, the association has distributed almost $37.1 million in cash to stockholders, which is the highest in any 12 month period in the association's history. And since 1990, the association has allocated 530 mil, 534 million in patronage and distributed cash of 519 million to its members. That was just a quick summary of the 2019 financial results. Our 2019 annual report is posted on our website. It should be arriving in your mailbox in the next few days. I would like to spend the remainder of my time with you reviewing the association's patronage program. Walt Disney once said, what you do well, do, do what you do well, and they will want to see it again and bring their friends. I think this quote perfectly describes Mid-Atlantic. We were able to earn profits because you remain a customer year after year, rewarding us for the good service which we strive to provide every day. You help us grow the business and increase profits by telling your friends and neighbors about farm credit, the good service which it provides, its competitive rates, and we can't thank you enough for continuing to trust us to be your financial lender. So let's talk a little more about patronage and how the annual payment is determined. Patronage is essentially a dividend or a distribution that a cooperative pays to its members based upon the percentage of its profits. Each stockholder's dividend is calculated according to how much interest that stockholder paid to the cooperative during that year. Before your cooperative can pay patronage, it must determine how much profit must be retained as capital in order to support the loan growth of the association. To support that loan growth, your association has historically been paying an annual cash distribution and also issuing what we call qualified equities, which is like an IOU. The board annually evaluates the association's capital position, which as mentioned before is a measurement of the association's financial position during economic challenges. And based upon the capital percentages and the outlook for future performance and growth of the association, your board makes a determination of whether some of that IOU can be redeemed in cash. We discussed a couple of minutes ago, the recent distribution for the outstanding 2012 and 2013 non-qualified allocated surplus. That was re the board redeeming in cash some of those IOUs. Right now, the association has non-qualified surplus outstanding for the years 2013 to 2014 of 15 and a half million. And beginning in 2015, the board has not distributed any qualified equities due largely to the strong capital position of the association. Your board will continue to, eva to annually evaluate the ability to pay an annual cash distribution, as well as determining the probability of revolving any of that historical allocated equities in cash, just like we did in December of 2019 and February of this year. The association has successfully paid an annual cash distribution for each of the 20 years of its existence as Mid-Atlantic. That's a pretty good reflection of the consistency and dependability of your association in good times and challenging times in the agricultural sector. The payment of patronage is, of course, always subject to the board's evaluation and the analysis of the financial position of the association. I would like to wrap up with a quote from business executive and entrepreneur Naveen Jain. He said, stay focused on the mission. I assure the members of our association that our staff and our board is focused on what matters. During these challenging times and unique times, which is, a mis which is our mission of working together to be there for you, our members, in both good times and bad, and future generations. It's been my pleasure to share this financial update with you, and we look forward to communicating with you each quarter to discuss the association's financial performance. I would like now to turn the meeting over to Kathy Blair, Senior Vice President of Corporate Services. Good morning. I am the association's election officer, and I will be presenting the nominating committee's report. Your elected 2020 nominating committee met in December and by a series of conference calls over the following several weeks. Their purpose in meeting was to select qualified candidates for open seats on the board of directors and the 2021 nominating committee. Stockholders have the option of voting in this year's election electronically or via mailed in ballots. The election process will begin on April 16th when ballot packets will be mailed to all eligible voting stockholders. About two weeks later, on May 6th, the polls will close at the end of the day. Beginning the next day, May 7th, electronic and mailed in ballots will be validated and tabulated. A validation process is in place to ensure that no stockholder casts more than one vote in the election. The independent firm Survey and Ballot Systems has been engaged to handle the validation and tabulation process. Each voting stockholder of Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit 
is entitled to only one ballot, regardless of the number of single or joint loans the stockholder may have. A voting stockholder is defined as the one person designated on the most recently executed membership application as having the power of attorney for their farm credit relationship. That is the only person who should fill out the election ballot when you receive it in your mail. If you are uncertain who has the voting rights on your farm credit account, please call your local office and one of our staff members will be happy to look that up for you. The nominations follow our six different election regions shown on the map. The voting stockholder will be entitled to cast their vote for all positions, no matter what region the candidates are in and no matter what region the voter lives in. They're entitled to vote in all election regions but are not required to do so. If the individual does not feel comfortable voting in all of the regions and wishes to leave a portion of the ballot blank, the rest of the ballot, ballot will still be valid. I will now read the names of the candidates for the Board of Directors. All terms are four years in length. Biographical information about the candidates for director is included in the ballot package that will be mailed out on April 16th. In this year's election, there is one position open in the Central Maryland election region. The candidates are Paul D. Bumgardner of Emmitsburg in Frederick County, Maryland. Taylor B. Huffman of Thurmont in Frederick County, Maryland. In this year's election, there is one position open in the Chesapeake election region. The candidates are Harry F. Moreland III of Preston in Caroline County, Maryland. Jennifer L. Rhodes of Centerville in Queen Anne's County, Maryland. There are no director positions open in the Delaware election region this year. In this year's election, there is one position open in the Keystone election region. The candidates are Cheryl A. Fairbairn of Coatesville, Pennsylvania in Chester County, Pennsylvania. Laura M. Heilinger of Lebanon in Lebanon County, Pennsylvania. There are no director positions open in the Marva election region this year. There are no director positions open in the Valley election region this year. That competes, completes the slate of candidates for open director positions submitted by this year's nominating committee. I will now read the names of the candidates for next year's nominating committee. Each region has two positions open and each position is a one-year term. In the Central Maryland election region, for position number one, the candidates are Eric L. Beam of Westminster, Maryland, William Mike Herbert of Millers, Maryland, and Bradley L. Humbert of Westminster, Maryland. For position number two, the candidates are Kathleen W. Carr of Sharpsburg, Maryland, Taylor B. Huffman of Thurmont, Maryland. In the Chesapeake election region, for position number one, the candidates are David A. Hill of Kennedyville, Maryland, Edward Robinson of Mardell, Maryland. For position number two, the candidates are Hannah N. Cauley of Denton, Maryland, Garrett D. Luthy of Cambridge, Maryland. In the Delaware election region for position number one, the candidates are Mark G. Briggs of Georgetown, Delaware, Fred N. West III of Frankfort, Delaware. For position number two, the candidates are Richard W. Dickerson of Laurel, Delaware, Kristen Baxter Malin of Georgetown, Delaware. In the Keystone election region for position number one, the candidates are Marcus S. Howell of Chester Springs, Pennsylvania, Jerry L. Musser of Newmanstown, Pennsylvania. For position number two, the candidates are J. Peter Flynn of Westtown, Pennsylvania, Nelson W. Wickes of Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. In the Marvel election region, the position for position number one, the candidates are Travis L. Gosley of Sharpstown, Maryland, Lee W. Richardson of Willards, Maryland. For position number two, the candidates are Christopher Robert Bunting of Berlin, Maryland, and Dustin A. Callowell of Mardell Springs, Maryland. 
In the Ele Valley election region for position number one, the candidates are Jared A. Berner of Luray, Virginia, Charles R. Garber of Timberville, Virginia. For position number two, the candidates are Diane S. Kearns of Winchester, Virginia, and Karen U. Kwiatkowski of Mount Jackson, Virginia. That concludes the slate of candidates for the 2021 nominating committee as selected by this year's nominating committee. At today's business meeting, there is an opportunity for additional candidates to be nominated from the floor. If there are floor nominations, both the person making the nomination and the person who is being nominated must be voting stockholders of the association. In addition, certain information must be presented concerning the nominating person's business activities and other matters. The list of required information is lengthy, so I will not read it unless there is a nomination from the floor. Are there any nominations from the floor? Hearing none, is there a motion to close floor nominations? Is there a second to the motion? All voting stockholders in favor of the motion to close nominations, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. The motion carries, thank you. Just a reminder that ballot packages will be placed into the mail on April 16th, addressed to all voting stockholders. If you are uncertain who the designated voter is on your farm credit account, call your local office and one of our staff members will be happy to look it up for you. Only the designated voter should complete the ballot. All ballots must be received no later than the end of the day on May 6th. Ballots that are received by that date will be verified as to eligibility and counted by survey and ballot systems. We expect the election results will be available by calling any of our offices after 4 p.m. on May 8th. Results will be posted immediately to our website, mafc.com, and on our Facebook and Twitter feeds. A results postcard will be mailed to all members within 15 days after the ballots are counted. One of the special things about being a voting member of your farm credit cooperative is not only your opportunity to help choose its leaders by voting, but also the opportunity to play an active role in your association's leadership, either as a director or member of the nominating committee. If you are interested in serving as a director or nominating committee member, please feel free to contact me and I would be happy to share more information with you regarding the requirements and expectations of each position. So I encourage you to watch for your ballot packet in the mail, place your vote electronically or by mail, and consider playing an active role in the future leadership of your association. This time I'll turn it back over to Brian Boyd. Thank you, Kathy. I wanted to thank those of you who join us today and those that are viewing this recording. I would also encourage you and your family to attend one of our local farm credit fair events. Association staff, executive leadership, and board will be in attendance to fellowship with customers while supporting our local community and having family fun at the fair courtesy of farm credit. For more information, please visit mafc.com appreciation. Thank you.